All right, so we're picking this up. Now, we're, we actually have quite a little bit to go through. Um, I thought this was like the major, I mean, there's still a little bit more of the story. This is the major breaking point, but still, it continues a little bit. There's a little more story to go before we reach the conclusion. So, last episode was basically Toma and Kazuza letting each other know that how they felt. This episode is pretty much just going to be Haruki and Setsuna. We'll see how that goes. なんとか峠は越したみたいだね。37.8°C。あ、looks I don't understand what that's about, the snowflake thing. It was specifically on this line. Just this morning, your fever was almost 40 degrees, you know. So Really? I honestly don't remember. Figures. You seem to lose consciousness because of such a high fever. <sighs> Looks like she's not exaggerating. Two days ago, on a holiday, Monday. It feels like it was just yesterday to me. On that day. It feels like it was just yesterday to me. On that day, as nighttime came, snow started falling intensely and showed no signs of stopping even after midnight. I stood there in place. I didn't even move after parting with her. I didn't even go and meet Setsuna, even though she was waiting. I guess I just stood there like an idiot until I got exhausted. I'll put the rest of the porridge in the fridge. It's the one I told you about before, the canned one. The next thing I remember, I was on my bed. My face was wet because of my tears, and my throat was dry. When you're hungry, just go, Jing. No, I mean, heat it up in the microwave and eat it. <laughs> it looks like I picked up my mom's way of talking. The next time I woke up, Setsuna was in front of me, looking relieved, and I could feel a cold towel on my face. Setsuna. Huh? What is it? Do you want water? I'm sorry. For what? First, that I couldn't come to your party. Well, of course you couldn't. You shouldn't have even tried to leave home in your condition. Even this disastrous scene still acts according to my convenience, making it a valid reason for not coming to Setsuna's birthday party. Well, I suppose it's a good warning to you that you should mind your health, Haruki-kun. I'm sorry. I'm just kidding. Oh, you must be really sick if you're taking that seriously. I'm not lying to her. But not saying anything about it makes me feel just as bad as lying. Second, I'm sorry that you had to come all the way here. Well, 
When Kazaza fell sick, I couldn't even visit her. This is payback for that. <laughs> and besides, I'm glad to have you rely on me. <sighs> I'm sorry. Stop apologizing already. Don't act so feeble, alright? At first, when I saw Setsuna, I thought that she was worried because she couldn't get in touch with me. And she decided to come here. But when I checked my history, I realized that I was the one who called her first. I really am the worst. Yes, you are, Haruki. And the third? Maybe I just called because I couldn't go to the party and wanted to apologize. Maybe I just wanted her to, to send her a happy birthday message. However, right now, I really can't remember why I called her. But even so, I called Setsuna. I told her that I was sick. Yet, just a few hours beforehand, I had betrayed her feelings, one-sidedly. Don't think about useless things. You'd better get some sleep. <laughs> yeah. Even though I can't admit my betrayal, I still hold out for her kindness. I'm the worst of the worst. I think I I think I should head back. It's about time for my family to come back home, too. Did they go somewhere? Yeah, yeah. Uh, they went to the shopping mall this morning. Right, they're shopping, eating, watching movies. Is that so? Sorry again. I'm sure you wanted to join them too, right, Setsuna?